Oh hey, it's Wes. And today, we get to take a look at something for some reason that's just a little bit different these days. Everyone's reaching for the sky, and for some reason, this sort of stuff isn't getting all the press that it used to. It is the TT-685 Mark II. We've grown so accustomed to Godox being known for the lithium-ion powered flashes that were kind of forgotten in the media about just the classic AA powered flashes. Now why do you want these? Well, if you need to be able to change batteries quickly, number one, if you're gonna go through a lot of batteries, some people don't want to have to buy or can't afford to buy a ton of the lithium ion battery packs. They're proprietary, they're kind of expensive. Also, you have a cheaper flash. We have a lower barrier for entry. And things are very interesting this time around with the TT-685 Mark II, or just two. Similar to how the V863 updated to be a lot like the V1, the 685 also updated to be a lot like the V1. Once again, we have the same screen, the same user interface for the most part. So this is a lower cost flash with a lot of the same interface and features as its more expensive brothers or sisters. So what's that mean to us? Let's go through all the categories, let's get in deep and start as always with the build quality. So number one, the first thing that you'll see here, as I mentioned before, this looks pretty much identical to the V860 Mark III. You can turn the flash head both ways. It has the tilt back head. The plastics feel exactly the same. The battery door feels very rigid, very sturdy, almost too sturdy. Let's have a look at the V860 Mark II. I have a lot of flashes around here. I love the battery door on the V860 Mark II because it is so fast. You pull that, pops up, get that battery out. Bada bing, bada boom, love that. Now, I really wish that this had the same style battery door as the V860 Mark II. I suppose there's a chance that it would catch on something, but this door, you pull it down and it kinda pops itself up, then you gotta crank it up, and then you get the batteries out. The battery holes themselves are all individually separated makes it somewhat easy to get them all in the way that they need to. And then down at the bottom here, we once again have the exact same shoe design as the V1 and the V860 Mark III. And just so you know, I'm gonna be having a separate standalone video directly comparing everything about the V1, V860 Mark III, and the TT685 II. So stick around for that. It'll focus a little more in depth, but also be a little bit quicker. Here, we're mostly gonna to try to focus on this new flash, though. The back screen itself is made of a very hard plastic. However, it is plastic, so it will scratch at some point. The buttons, once again, feel the same as the ones on the, the previous flashes, which has its ups and downs. A lot of people don't care for this wheel on the back. It's kind of chintzy and easy to press by accident. We have a nice solid off-on power switch. I do greatly prefer that and our locking foot. Has its ups and downs because it is faster, however, it can be looser if you have a loose hot shoe, you can't just clamp it down as far as you want. Of course, in the front, we have our diffusion panel and our bounce card, easy peasy. On the side here, we have a USB-C port. This is just for firmware updating and a very tiny sync port. Then on the front, one thing that we don't have on the other flashes is an external power port. So you can use this for Godox's PB series external power packs. You'll also notice on the front here, there is no LED. I wasn't a massive fan of the LED on both of the V860 and the V1s. That is very much a personal thing. Some people love that, so that's a big loss for those people. But overall, the short and the long of it is, this is the exact same build quality as the previous new series flashes. So. That's a nine out of 10. The only issue is, and it's kind of Sony's problem, this isn't as much of an issue on the Canon and Nikon flashes, this hot shoe is mostly plastic. It's thicker than before, but still not fantastic. And an issue that we have here, it's very easily replaceable. You have four screws around it. These two on the V1, the V860 Mark III are interchangeable, or so I hear. 
This one is a little bit different because it has a notch on it for the external power jack, so you're gonna have to get a different part number for that to get replaced if it does break. Feature set, once again, we see a lot of familiar things here. We have the same 76 watt second power, but we do have a slower recycle time. We're looking at 2.6 seconds of full power versus 1.5. That's because we're relying on AA batteries instead of lithium ion rechargeable batteries. So it's a little bit slower. Now, how does that come out actually in practice? Well, as someone who's super accustomed to the lithium ion flashes, it's funny because I intuitively expect a certain recycle time from these flashes. And so while I'm using the TT685, I'm not used to its recycle time and I intuitively expect it to be a little bit faster. And so I find myself getting stuck with black frames and so forth. But if that's what you're used to, then I mean, that's perfectly fine. You're saving a bunch of money to get that. So that's fine. So we have the improved user interface. Now, it's not the fancy touchscreen, super intuitive design that we see on stuff like Profoto and Westcott. So we're not 100% winning there. We've got that lean back head that's super convenient for bouncing. There is no modeling light or uh, video light, depending on what you want to call that. You've got the quick lock foot, feature for some people. You can go down to 1 256 power. I believe the old version of this only did 1 1 28th, so that's an advantage. It lacks the dedicated TTL switch. I didn't use that much myself, but some people do love that. However, it does maintain the TCM functionality. So if you take a flash in TCL, a button will appear on the screen. Let's see here, yep, there we go. That you can press the TCM button and convert that to manual. That's fantastic, because if you stay in TTL, you'll get slower recycle times and you'll run out of battery faster. However, if you can switch to manual, that's a huge advantage for you always best to get out of TTL as quickly as you can. We'll talk more about TTL a little bit later though. As far as battery life goes, this will get you 330 shots on a full charge of batteries versus 480 on the new series Godox flashes that actually have a smaller battery than the previous 6 V860 Mark II, which was rated for 650 full powered flashes. Now, I don't have any issue with the battery life on the three series with the new battery, they're pretty solid, and in some ways, you're overall, throughout the life of the flash, going to get a better battery life with these slightly reduced lithium ion batteries because they last better, like, throughout their lifetime. They're a more stable battery, they'll recharge more times. Whereas this one, it's always 330 shots, but if you start getting worse battery life, you can just buy new AA batteries, no problem, easy peasy. Speaking of AA batteries, there is some confusion over there. I have had some comments about that just recently over what kind of AA batteries you should be using. Some people say, oh, you have to use Alkaline with Godox products. Now, that's only talking about the transmitters. Got a bunch of transmitters sitting back there. The transmitters, it is preferable to use Alkaline batteries. However, with the flashes, it's actually better to use nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. Why is that? Well, the transmitters rely on a certain voltage and they're kind of finicky. In a flash, this is a high current, high drain scenario. And ironically, alkaline batteries aren't great for that. Lithium alkaline batteries are okay for that. But nickel metal hydride batteries have extremely low internal resistance. And what does that mean? It can be as much as one half or one quarter of the internal resistance of an alkaline battery. That means that it can dip current faster and more effectively. And this is a high discharge situation. So you can save money and save the environment by switching to rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. I would suggest going with either the IKEA Lada batteries, any loop batteries, or the high capacity Amazon batteries. They are all fantastic batteries. They work great. I'm using the Amazon batteries now. I was using any loop for quite a while, but they're incredibly hard to get in Canada now for some reason. Okay, moving right on along. One more feature that this is lacking is the round head that you can put magnetic attachments on. You can get an adapter for that. I have that, but it's kind of finicky. You gotta put it on and it sometimes it falls off. But anyway, it's better to just have a round head if you wanna use those adapters. And honestly, the biggest feature is that this integrates with the entire Godox X series wireless. This can control other flashes or be controlled by other flashes. It can be both independently controlling itself while controlling three other groups of flashes. That is fantastic. One of the biggest features I have to mention on this is that it has a channel scanner function. This is huge. I did not expect it to be included on this flash, but 
it's probably the same main board that they use in all the other flashes, so it's just there. It's already there. This is fantastic, especially for Godox users. You want to do this whenever you're in a new situation. You do a channel scan and find out which channels are available if you're going to be using off-camera flash so that you don't get interference and end up with dropped flash or misfires. A lot of people don't use this as much as they should, and it's great that it's built into this flash. More products that have it, the better. So overall, for feature set, we're looking at a six out of 10. So a year and a half ago, it wouldn't be quite so low, but because of the existence of the Westcott flashes with better user interface, with universal hot shoe compatibility, unfortunately, Godox flashes are bouncing down a bit on that scale. Honestly, within the next year, I expect Godox to release either a new V1 with some revolutionary updates or an entirely new something pro flash that will have a color touch screen and all those things. Godox hasn't really ventured into the whole color touch screen thing yet, which is kind of interesting. A lot of the time they've been first to market with new technologies, but not this time around. Usability. This flash, as you can probably guess, is dead simple to use. You got that tilt back head, the improved user interface. Uh, AA batteries are considered more usable by some, less usable by others. You know the trade-offs there, so I, I can't really give that a plus or a minus there. The screen, however, is a bit antiquated, as is the inter user interface and menu system. It's not terrible, but it's also not as amazing as some of the new stuff on the market. And there's no like wireless smartphone integration. Not important to me, but important to some people. You can do it, but you need to uh, link your phone to a Bluetooth trans A1 device from Godox. So, Overall, for usability, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. Very high with regards to, again, a few years ago, but the market has moved forward and we have a lot more smart devices now, and this is not a smart device by any means. Light quality. How do you measure the light quality of a flash? Well, you fire it at a target and uh, see just how close you get to your gray point and how consistent your flash quality is. So I'm going to bring up my numbers here. Literally numbers. It's the Mac app called Numbers that I measured all this stuff in. After firing many, 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 many times, comparing the V860 Mark III to the TT685 II, we see that the V860 Mark III has slightly better stability. When you're within sync speed, it's just maybe like 20 or 30% more stable. When you're in HSS, surprisingly enough, again, nickel metal hydride batteries are pretty good at high drain situations. They are very close, they are neck and neck. We're looking at 1.6% variation versus 1.5. So the V860 does win, but not by that much. And then we move on to TTL. There we have the uh, V860 being much more stable. So at TTL, we have 1% variation versus 3% brightness variation on the TT685. Now, yes, that's 3% three, three times more stable. However, these variations are still very small. You've got to get past 5% variation to be more than a tenth of a stop in light output change. So they're still very stable. Godox has been doing much better with CTL these days. Their earlier products were incredibly unreliable, but these are quite good. Again, 685, we have 3% brightness variation. V860, only 1%. That's fantastic. Now with regards to light quality, I wanna to talk to you about the easiest way to get the most bang for your buck out of a speed light. You want to do an outdoor shoot. People say, ah, you got to get an 8600 to do that. Not necessarily. Now, if you're in broad daylight, this is a no-go. But if you're in the morning or approaching sunset, the easiest way to do that is to get a modifier that you can use that doesn't require a diffusion panel. Use a diffusion panel, you're losing too much light. So I use a 7-foot Westcott umbrella, use the S2 bracket, and I fire this into the umbrella with the diffusion panel off and then you can get the most bang for your buck for the flash. If your camera is going above sync speed into HSS, that is also a no-no. So you're going to want to use an ND filter on your camera to make sure that you stay below sync speed and don't get into HSS because you lose more flash power there. If you use the ND filter, use a modifier that doesn't require a diffuser, you can get a lot of power out of one of these flashes as long as you keep it close-ish to your subject. And then if you want to go pro level and have a two light setup with just one flash, put your flash behind your subject and then point it straight at your umbrella so that once it lights up the back of your subject, it then bounces off the umbrella and lights up the front of your subject. So 
This is a way that you can get fantastic images and great light on the cheap with just one flash. And one of those big umbrellas is about a hundred bucks. It's less than this flash. It's not a very expensive modifier, but it is a huge modifier with great light quality. light quality, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. So let's move on to our last category, which is value. And that's where things are most important with this flash. The original TT685 is $110. This one comes in at $130. So the price has gone up, but you do get a little bit more for your money. However, the market has gotten more competitive in the meantime. So what do we compare this against? Honestly, not a lot because we are so low in price. There's not a lot to talk about. We've got the V860 Mark III, $230, that's $100 more, significantly different. And the V1, $260, even more still. Kind of a forgotten Godox product is the V850 Mark II. I honestly expect a Mark III of that to come out soon as well, but that is only $140 and that gives you a lithium ion battery pack with faster recycle times. However, it's missing some features. But $130 isn't the lowest price you can do right now. You can get the newer, NW655, same power output, also has a transceiver built in. That is between $100 and $125, depending on the day that you're looking at this. And essentially that's the same package here. And essentially that's the same package here. But what you're missing is the compatibility with the massive Godox wireless lineup. And that's a huge advantage. But can Godox ride on that forever? I, I don't know. And honestly, there's no use in comparing this to first party flashes from Sony, Nikon, and Canon because those prices are over $500, not even close to this. So overall, this is not a slam dunk like it used to be. You can get something cheaper, but it's still a phenomenal value if you want to save a buck and get the most bang for your buck. You can't really go wrong with this. This is a nine out of 10 for value. All right, and that gives us a 38 out of 50 in total for the score. That's a pretty high score, honestly. Actually higher than I thought it would be. Because honestly, it is a very well-rounded product. It is something that Godox has been working for on for a long time. It's what they're good at, giving you solid bang for your buck. If you have any questions about the TT685 Mark II, let me know down in the comments below. And again, subscribe, stick around, where we do a, a closer, more focused head-to-head -head between the V1, the TT685 II, and the V860 Mark II three in case you still have any questions about which one of these is right for you. So until next time, let's go take some photos.